everybody. Good to see you in the swamp. Here comes Brindle. I like my dog time, right? If I pay attention, I'll play guitar better. And Cheryl's sending our feet out to other sites. That's what we do at the beginning of the show. much to talk about tonight. Um, it's, been a, it's been a busy week. We have a lot going on and uh, we're prepping for a couple of interesting shows. But one of the first things I want to do is I want to I thank a friend. Uh, it's one of the great things about doing this show. Look at the gift I got in the mail today. This is a book from an old friend of mine named Leslie Peter Wolf. I can't wait to read it. What a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Les, if you're watching. And if not, I hope you hear about it. <laughs> Um, so, um, we're going to start out with uh, the Sea Trilogy tonight, and uh, let's see how we get through that. One day as I walked by the pier, looking for Dressai, I met a woman with a child, and talked with her.
My name is Jennifer Brown and I come from Mystic Town. I spent all my life chasing whales. In Mystic I was born, though I've been around the horn with a cold looking pair of a sail. The last trip we sailed, we ran into a gale. The ballast it shifted about. Then a rock hit the side and the blanks they opened wide. I thought that my time had run out.
sound of the sea, birds that hang on the wind, wakens me from a long rest. You're by the arm, the crystalline beach, changing in form. It hammers all within, like the sound of the waves on the sand. I've been gone these seven years, lost in the sea here with you. Driven on the pulsating flood Between the shores of the skin Seven years from port to port With foreign tongues too thick to one Now I'm lying here upon the shore In the warmth of your sun and your sand Sweet words unspoken underneath the ocean's breeze You can hear them in the water as they splash upon the beach Being is a promise Built upon the sand Promise me the mystery The warmth that's in your hand Walking down along the shore The water tugs at our knees Jewels that glitter beneath the waves draw us into the sea weightless with the water's flood and wise as the dolphin that swims endlessly how I long forget that one chord. <laughs> yeah, we didn't notice. <laughs> oh, thank you for not noticing. Uh, so anyhow, let's talk, let's take a second while I switch guitars here. Um, let's take a second. Where's that iPad? Oh, it's probably somewhere else in another part of the house. <laughs> really? You can, but you can talk about... Um, I wanted to show them the picture. Hang on, I'll see if I can find it. it. Yeah. All right, well, we have... Oh, I'm still here! <laughs> we have, uh, Kurt has a radio show appearance that he's going to tell you about. Uh, ha that has to do with the 40-year anniversary celebration of the Save the Mountain album. And in HV1, it's Hudson Valley 1, there is an article. Yeah, so uh, Sunday, uh, this coming Sunday, uh, I'll be on the Doug Grunther show, uh, which is called Woodstock Roundtable on WDST. I know everybody it's in the China, Hudson Valley so I don't know if, if knows WDST, see. so they may not be able to see that, right? Uh, well, I'll read you a little bit of it. This is, uh, this is an article from HV1, uh, and there's a picture of me that you would never, never recognize. It's from 40, 40 years ago, but this is basically it. I'll read you just a tiny little bit of it. 
Over 40 years ago, the longest environmental struggle in American history inspired a repertoire of protests that echoed through the mountains. With the prize, Lake Minnewaska was preserved for all time as a New York State Park Preserve. Friends of the Shangums and many others are still at work growing the greater Shangum Preserve for citizens of the world to enjoy whenever they wish. So on Sunday, we're going to talk a little bit about the making of the record Save the Mountain, and we're going to talk a little bit about the struggle uh, with uh, Doug Grunther, depending on what, because it is um, conversational improv, uh, I, I hope we'll stay on track, which I think we will. Doug's a pretty, pretty interesting guy, and uh, you'll like the show. So we're going to do another, uh, right now, we're going to do another uh, three songs somewhat linked together. Uh, they're not segued quite as well as uh, the C Trilogy because I, I haven't really thought about it. Um, let's see. I know this guitar. But anyway, if you are listening, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. And please drop us a little note. And even if we don't get back to you right now, I know a lot of you, a lot of our um, friends who usually join us are here. And um, I can't really see everybody's name from here without my glasses on, but we will comment back to you later. So please drop us a note. Let us know a little bit about you, what's going on. Okay. We appreciate you coming and listening. So these, uh, these next songs, uh, oh, I should have gotten that poem out. These next songs are, are uh, somewhat based on a poem by Robert Herrick called Upon Julia's Clothes, which, which I always liked because um, the poet Herrick uh, wrote about Julia at different times in her life. He wrote about her as a child wrote about her as a uh, beautiful sex pot. And uh, it's kind of wonderful seeing the way his sort of affection for her at all these different levels. Um, so I wrote three Julia songs uh, that uh, are somewhat uh, influenced by Robert Herrick. This first one is called, it, this first one is funny, it should probably be the last one because it's the one that's called Julia Left, but the songs kind of flow. So we're going backwards in time.
the sunshine there's love that I can still find a world where no one's lonely where Julie is waiting for me well, I can't face tomorrow I'm drinking down my sorrow I'm guessing she's with someone I'm sick from thinking about her I just can't live without her My life is coming undone Julia 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 Lovers on before dawn. 
Yes. So, but yeah, so I'm gonna. Ju- I think I saw a um, yes. wolf sign on. So, oh, so we did receive your book today. So Thanks, thank Les. You. I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> so, oh, oh, you know, I, I will take this off for a second, even though I'm gonna use it again. Uh, oh, what you, you know what? Let's do. I let's do. No, let's do. I want to do. I hear my name first. I hear my name first, and, and then, then we'll do that. We want to okay. do. We're gonna uh, for our little poem section tonight. We'd like to remember Lawrence Ferlinghetti. Uh, but I want to play the song first, uh, and then and then I can get to the more serious business of of Ferlinghetti's poetry. Uh, this uh, song this week was a request um, from my friend Gary Turbush. Right? Is that what we do? Yeah, is it Gary who requested it? Yes, it was. Oh, nice. So uh, this is a this song I hear my name was a song I wrote while I was being 
followed by a group of paranoids. Yeah. <laughs> but this is what's this is what's going to happen if the oceans rise uh, 15 feet or so, and Jamaica slips under the waves. All the reggae musicians are going to. Uh, take boats and, and land in the Ozarks where they, where they will join up with a group of bluegrass players and play music, something like this. I hear my name come whispering through the trees The night shines cold, I just can't sleep Uh, Doug Grunther's Woodstock Roundtable uh, sat this Sunday, the 28th, at 810. 810, yeah. They, the the entire interview. show, and Doug's show is interesting. If you're up at 7, you might want to you know, catch Doug at 7 o'clock. 
and uh, and I'll be on with Doug at 810. We'll be talking about uh, about the uh, the amazing thing that happened in the Hudson Valley, and that is that uh, a huge corporation wanted to take over a piece of land, and we didn't let them, and we won. And yeah. that's a that's that's really the gist of the story. But there's so much more to it, and it's it's a real good lesson for all of us. Okay, um, switching gears. Uh, when I was in uh, tenth grade, and uh, and uh, I did what I norm what I did in, in ninth grade also, and that is. By the time November came around, I was hopelessly lost with mathematics. I, I've never had much of an ability to do it. However, I can do pretty large arithmetic sums in my head, but I, I couldn't do more abstract stuff for some reason, at least not at that age. And so I had a really nice teacher. I, I guess I'm sure he's passed on by now, so I don't think they can fire him. Uh, his name was his name was Mr. Scavo, and he was he was a really really nice man. He knew that he knew that I was suffering in the classroom, and he. He knew that he knew that I was pretending to follow along and nodding my head, and so he just gave he gave me a book to read, and uh, he figured that would be a better thing for me to do than than just sit there being miserable. So, the book he gave me, he did tell me not to tell anybody he gave it to me was Lawrence Ferlinghetti's A Coney Island of the Mind, and and I have to tell you it it just floors me that when I was fifteen or sixteen years old, I was reading Lawrence Ferlinghetti, who was at that point in his late 40s. Astounding. And the man just died, just died, 101 years old. Now, if you're a happy poet, living to be 101 is pretty damn good. I, I gotta give him credit, and what a happy guy he was. You know, not that all his poems were, mind you. But I suppose if you're an unhappy poet, it'll probably seem like 101 years anyway, so, you know. So, I'm going to read two by Lawrence Ferlinghetti because they're short. This one is called, to the, called the, uh, to the Oracle of Delphi. I think most of you know what that was, but in ancient Greece there was an oracle at Delphi. And the priest, or Sibyl, uh, was in a cave and she was sitting on a tripod over a crack in the rock. And legend has it that out of that crack in the rock there came gases up from the earth that were intoxicating. And then she would go into a trance and, and, and tell you a cryptic version of what your future was going to be. <clears throat> so this is based on the, on the Oracle of Delphi. Uh, one of the interesting facts here, I think I, I think I remember to write it down, yes, and that is that, uh, is that Lawrence Ferlinghetti read this poem at Delphi in Greece on March 21st, 2001 at the UNESCO World Poetry Day. <laughs> nice. To the Oracle of Delphi. Great Oracle, why are you staring at me? Do I baffle you? Do I make you despair? I, Americus the American, wrought from the dark in my mother long ago. From the dark of ancient Europa, why are you staring at me now, in the dusk of our civilization? Why are you staring at me as if I were America itself, the new empire, vaster than any in ancient days, with its electronic highways, carrying its corporate monoculture around the world, and English, the Latin of our days? Great Oracle, sleeping through the centuries, awaken now and tell us how to save us from ourselves and how to survive our own rulers who would make a plutocracy of our democracy in the great divide between the rich and the poor in whom Walt Whitman heard America singing. O oh, long silent Sybil, you of the winged dreams, speak out from your temple of light as the serious constellations with Greek names still stare down on us as a lighthouse moves its megaphone over the sea. Speak out and shine upon us, the sea light of Greece, the diamond light of Greece. Far-seeing, Sybil, forever hidden, come out of your cave at last and speak to us in the poet's voice, the voice of the fourth person singular, the voice of the inscrutable future, the voice of the people mixed with a wild, soft, and give us new dreams to dream. Give us new myths to live by. The 
this last one I've read before, and uh, I think a lot of people know it. Uh, Michael, you said this is your favorite for Linguetti, so I'll dedicate this to you. This is called Pity the Nation. It's good to have friends. Pity the nation whose people are sheep and whose shepherds mislead them. Pity the nation whose leaders are liars, whose sages are silenced and whose bigots haunt the airwaves. Pity the nation that raises not its voice except to praise conquerors and acclaim the bully as hero and aims to rule the world with force and by torture. Pity the nation that knows no other language but its own and no other culture but its own. Pity the nation whose breath is money and sleeps the sleep of the too well fed. Pity the nation. Oh, pity the people who allow their rights to erode and their freedoms to be washed away. My country, tears of thee, sweet land of liberty. Lawrence from Getty. Wonderful, wonderful poet. Beatnik, the owner of the famous City Lights bookstore. And um, this brings us to our last song. And um, Ferlinghetti in uh, Pity the Nation. Uh, this, is, this is my pity of our nation and my pity for our language. It's a song called So We Sing, and it's, it's, a, song about, it's a song about the nature of propaganda. Uh, and uh, that's something we're living through. We're living through the, uh, the, age, of, uh, the age of the gaslight. The age of Trump. You ready, girl? Uh, yeah. Let me, let me do a quick tune-up here. Okay. Don't mess up now. No, I won't. Okay, I won't do that again. <laughs> Only Craig will enjoy it if you do. No. <laughs> Not the awful noise. <laughs> but thanks again for joining us, and thanks for all your nice compliments I scanned through really quickly and read. And we have our usual Michael. Thanks for joining us as usual, our dedicated fan. Mom. Hi, Mom. You never say anything on here when I know you're there. Blaze brought his granddaughters. Okay. And now I'll stop talking so I can get into the intro part. I hear some guy yell from the wall box. A mechanical snarl in my face. I just can't imagine how he could imagine he's caught in the Lord's sweet embrace. Jam session here, and what's left of my brain cells a melodious echo of sound. So we sing, so we sing. The misogynist shouting for power believes that his blather is sublime, but his words spurting out from electrical towers. Is losing a war against time. It's the voice of the new man and Moses, the vibration of power and greed. I bow down to turn my guitar amp up louder just to find the release that I need. So we sing. Are the voices of people that ring in our ears They roll all around us and into our songs We borrow the bits and we pass them along They roll into what's right, they show up in what's wrong It's natural to join in the music 
And the wonder of playing it through The rhythm and melody All work together In a pattern that makes it seem true But we're not bound to notice that our script is No authority is tugging a chain When sound is the message And nothing's encrypted We'll all join to sing the refrain so we'll sing, so we'll sing. There are times when we struggle to play it, when mythology stands in the way. But it's there in the wood of the pipe and the timbrel, we're together. No one can own You can say it's just music Or maybe just rhythm But it's something that's never alone So we so much. Thanks for coming to the Nine Mile Swamp tonight. We've had a great time playing for you and uh, we hope to see you next Thursday. Thank you all for signing in and uh, it's always wonderful to see your names. Yes, we appreciate you coming. We Stay are safe. so grateful. Stay safe. Yeah. Get your vaccines. Join us again next week. So grateful you could make it.